Hello and welcome to the meta episode for week number four of the Rillor Revolution. So, we're going to be trying out something a little bit different this week. Um, for the dead characters, I was finding it a little bit... I don't know if it was that this way to watch, but it was a little bit odd to actually record it because some of the backstories didn't really fit what the character had done and things like that. And then I had to try and fudge things. And it became very odd. Like, it didn't feel like it was great at giving information, and it felt a little bit forced. So what we're going to do this week is we're going to try something a little bit different. And you can tell me whether you like it or not like it. But we're going to focus on what the character left behind. So we're going to say, here's the character. Here's how they died. Here's, um, like, whether they have an heir or something like that. And then a brief touch on the backstory. Like, say they wanted to take over... Well, we have somebody. The first one is wanted to take over Driftmark. Say they did not achieve that, then we can mention it. I think that is a much better way of doing it than the previous way I was doing it. Because the previous way was a little bit... I don't know. It was a little bit wishy-washy. It didn't quite fit in. Like, it was, it was kind of fighting the mechanics that we were dealing with. Like, the gameplay stuff. So, we'll, we'll try doing it this way and maybe that'll be a little bit better. So... Let's get into talking about uh, the dead custom courtiers this week. The first one that we have is Dagon Valerian. He was our uncle who died of... He had the flu, which is kind of a bad end for him. Uh, I guess he got it during some of the many diseases that were being passed around uh, the area. He left the world uh, in the court of our mother in Driftmark. And he had two children, Dauntus, Duncan... Well, he had three. He had Lucas as well, but Lucas died uh, of gout. But unfortunately, his children are Faith of the Seven, which is not so good. And they have a claim on Driftmark, well, a weak claim, which they could press because there is a female ruler and the claimant is a male. So this is definitely um, possible for some interesting stuff to happen up there with the Valerians. Next up, we have Arian Longwaters, whose goal was to take over Driftmark, which he did not achieve. However, he did have one son who... Um, has a claim on Driftmark, which he can press. So if he, if he can get like that adventure event, there is a chance that he can t challenge our mother for it. Um, and he has a sibling, weirdly. Wait. So that must be his mother's child. Yeah. And so Chael. Who's Sir Chael? No idea. Okay. Uh, but he has a noble house of King's Landing, which is kind of interesting. Uh, but yeah, Long Waters is continuing. Next up, we have Lauren Lannister, who was the legitimate bastard of Lord of Lannisport. He had many wives, actually. He had uh, Carla Yu and uh, Jane Halton, who gave him children. And his goal was kind of to take over Lannisport for R'hllor. So, um, he did that. Unfortunately, he was actually murdered under... Sus well, he, was, he died under suspicious circumstances... Which probably means he was murdered, and his son has a claim on... Well, it doesn't have a claim, but has the um, Faith of the Seven thing. That's what I was talking about. So basically, it's likely that somebody killed him because he was a R'hllor follower. So not going so well for him. Next up, we have William Umber, who didn't have any particular goals. He did marry a noble lady. Um, she was of Ashkeep, so it was a bastard house somewhere along the line. But he married into her, and they had several children. Walton Umber, who is married to, well, is matrilineally married to a Blackwood. We have uh, his daughter, who did have one child and was married to a Waterman. And then we have his other son, who doesn't have a wife yet because he's only four. But did get his claims, as did uh, the rest of them. Yeah, so on Last Hearth. So interesting stuff could happen there. Next up, we have Brandon, uh, well, now Brandon Locke. But he was Brandon Snow of Stark kind of uh, side of things. And his goal was to take over the North, which he hasn't done. Um, which it was un an unrealistic target for him in one lifetime. But he does have a son who has taken up his claims. If he can perhaps press um, some kind of advantage, maybe something could happen. Uh, his wife, was, I was thinking, was looking awfully well-dressed. But that's just because she is a repu in our kind of court. So there's a chance that we could press his claim, unlikely uh, within a lifetime, but he is only 24. There's a lot of his lifetime left. Um, yeah, he was slain by Kenneth Evenfall. I believe that was in a trial by combat, so interesting stuff. Who was he married to? He was married to an Ashwood. Okay, interesting. Next up, we have Torn Karstark, who I would like to apologize to, because I have spelt the name slightly wrong. 
uh, small typo, but that is fine. It still works as a name. Torin uh, died of dysentery and is in fact the second person to have married uh, Daenerys in this episode, which is kind of weird. He did not have any children, however the Car Starks are fairly large, so it doesn't really matter that much. Um, it does matter in the fact that he was a bastard, so it would have created another house. Um, but yeah, also Daenerys is imprisoned uh, now, so interesting stuff could happen to his uh, wife. And we have another Car Stark. It was Aaron Car Stark who just died comatose, so pretty much a natural death there. He was married to the Master of the Whispers of the North, so um, potentially could have used him for plots, and we didn't do that. But if there was a plot to be had, there was potential there. I mean, he is only the husband of the wife, so not exactly the best plot. Also, she was an old god follower. And they had one child, Branda Karstark, who is an old god follower, married to Duncan Liddell. Is Liddell the, um... No, I don't think Liddell's what I think it is. Liddell's a completely different house than I thought it was. But that's fine. Yes, she's married to him. Next up, we have Durin Dondarrion, whose uh, goal was to set out and make a name for himself, which he certainly did. He became a master of, um, what's his exact title? Uh, master of Dondarrion. So he was master of the Dondarrion house. And he definitely made a name for himself because we burned him alive. So people will remember his name for some time. He had multiple wives, but one of them gave him a son, Gullion, who is taken over as our Castellan and master of their house. What's interesting is if his son dies, we actually get uh, the normal Dondarrion house taking over. And wait, he's married to Marjorie Tyrell? Oh, well, that, that's definitely an interesting uh, path for that to take. Next up, we have Sir Kenneth Evenfall, whose goal lay somewhere in between revenge on his father slash getting some land from his father, something in that general area. But... People kept trying to kill him. There were so many plots against this guy, and, um, well, I just kept sending him out to, you know, fight the trial by combat, to, you know, fight against all these plots. And eventually, he lost one in a very unexpected way, because he had, I think, it was something like 18 personal combat skill, and the person who killed him, Balerian Blackfire, he only had 10. So, like, in theory, that shouldn't really be something that was happening, but, you know, I guess, uh, luck just wasn't with him in that day. Um, he didn't have any children, so that didn't go very well for him. And he did have his wife, who died a year after he did. Next up, we have Geralt Dane, who wanted to... Uh, his ultimate goal was take revenge his uncle, take back Starfall, and ensure that City follows the Lord of the Light. Well, um, Starfall does follow the Lord of the Light, uh, but it wasn't him who did it. It was actually Lord Vorian the Butcher who did it. So, um, I mean, sort of his goals were achieved. He had mul well, he had many wives. He's married to a Fowler. He was married to a Jordane, and he was married to uh, a Westerling. Okay, cool. I, th I thought I was wondering what is it of Dunbridge. So I was like, is that like the name of her noble house or something? But no, it's a Westerling. And he had a couple of children who died uh, stillborn. I think those were, for, oh, one was murdered from his first wife. Um, Miria Dane, who is from his first wife as well. And then Garen Dane, who is from his last wife. So his middle wife didn't give him any children. Next up, we have Roderick Yearnwood, who wanted to take over the Stone Way for himself uh, using Relor's help. And he wanted to remove the Martells from power. Um, he didn't manage to achieve either of those. The Martells are still pretty much in power, although, wow, he, he lo he's looking like he's had a rough time of it. Uh, the Martells are slowly dying from the plague, so there is a chance that that eventually happens, but I'm not sure how much of a hand he had in it. And the Stoneway is currently under control of his niece, I believe. Uh, ye... Great niece, I think. That's uh, the correct way of putting it. So that's not quite quite right, and she's also a follower of the Faith the Seven, as is his son, who might become a knight, though, and is strong and a trained fighter already, so uh, good things for his son, although not a follower of R'hllor. Next up, we have Lucerus Uller, who wanted not really anything in particular. He was married to some relation of his, um, I think, um, cousin? Yeah, he was married to his cousin, um, and, well, he had one child, but she was born stillborn, so his line does not continue. Next up, we have Edwin Stoneface Tarly, 
who uh, wanted to spread the word of the Lord of the Light. Uh, he died of cancer and, uh, well, he didn't really manage it. His wife was Faith the Seven, uh, who was married matrilineally too. She was a Durwell and their daughter is also uh, Faith the Seven, married to Elward Tyrell, who is Faith the Seven. And they've had a child, so um, it doesn't look good for that um, particular goal to be achieved, but there are a few more Tarleys who could potentially make that happen. Next up, we have Dickon Redwine, who didn't have a particular goal, but did manage to take over the arbor for Relore. He was married to Raileen Q, and uh, he had a lot of children. First one died attending to chamber business. Then we have Lysena Redwine, who is um, currently matrilineally betrothed to Olivar Redwine. Um, we have Orton Redwine, who is a Relore follower, and is actually has uh, an educator who is a Relore follower, so things looking good there. Um, unfortunately, he is also a child, so things might not be looking as good there. And he has his heir, who is betrothed to Olivar. Wait, did I already look at her? Oh, no, he has another sister, who is a follower of the lore, and um, yeah, has a claim on his title, but not much else. Next up, we have Glendon Fosway, who died of an infection. He was married to a noble lady, a Caswell. Um, oh, need to go back a husband, because she's already remarried there. Right. And he had several children who have already died. One was murdered, who had another child afterwards, a, a Butterwell. He had a son who died of poor health, who did have a child, uh, Eleanor Fosaway. And he had another daughter who is still alive and is married to a Connington. Next, we have Draken Drum, who wanted to find the love that he had lost through uh, converting to a lore and perhaps becoming a priest. However, it appears taking over his father's land got in the way of that, but he did manage to convert all of his nearby family to R'hllor, and um, he is he had a very good kind of life here by the looks of it. He had a lot of children, and um, he has a son who is a like, proper follower, being educated by the Red Priest. He has a daughter who is married to Harlow Hill. He has another daughter who is married to a magister uh, to Master Tero. So married into a republic. So things went pretty well for him. He also had a sympathy for the drowned god. So maybe he found uh, that he could get along with the people from his own religion after a while as well. Next up we have Damien Lannister whose uh, goal was kind of a little bit more... It was very vague. He wanted to fight for what he believes is the right cause. So it, it's vague. Difficult to uh, get that properly across. Um, he was a follower of Relora, though. He was married to a Hayswick and matrilineally married. So he has two sons, Garth Hayswick and Hayden Gayswick. And neither of them are actually followers of Relora. So, I don't know. He can draw his own conclusions from whether that was a successful uh, life or not. Next up, we have James the Tickler, who set out to punish the current Lord of the Dreadfort. But it appears the current Lord of the Dreadfort might have punished him as he died under suspicious circumstances. And we know that Roose Bolton was trying to kill him at one point. So uh, chances are he was killed by the former Lord of the Dreadfort as Roose Bolton is now dead. Next up we have Marquez Zo, who married our mother, which is uh, very presumptuous of him. And he wanted to take the Iron Throne for himself and to leave the Summer Islands behind. However, his uh, brother, Zalabar, uh, did not appear to uh, have the same kind of opinions and imprisoned him and he died in prison. And lastly, we have Edwal Merck, who did achieve his goal. He set out to begin a cadet house and begin his life south of the Wall um, and he succeeded perfectly well. I mean, his cadet house died off very quickly, but um, he started a cadet house, he married Marissa Nori matrilineally, and they did have two children, and so he started a life beyond the wall. Uh, his children are, one of them is strong, the other is not, and he died under suspicious circumstances. So there is a chance that he was murdered by um, the lo current Lord Stark. Right, that's it for all the dead characters. Again, tell me what you think. I think that from recording it, it seemed a little bit better. But, um, still need some work, but tell me what you think. Anyway, we're gonna go through the live characters quickly, as I'm running out of recording time, but let's see what we got. So, Raynar Hester Quidar, who is still a black brother, nothing has really changed with him currently. 
He doesn't have a title in Castle Black yet, but he could still get one. Valerian Blackfire, who has left our court after a trial by combat, is married to Cassandra, who's a little bit old, so unlikely to have children. However, if his wife dies, there is a chance that he'll remarry. I mean, he has a lot of claims and things. And he is in the Celtigar's court currently, which is in Stannis' realm. And Stannis really doesn't like us, so that makes sense. Then we have Oris, the Red Priest, who is still a Red Priest. Strangely, he didn't change his profession that quickly, although he does have gout, so he may die fairly soon. He's depressed with gout, but he's, he's got a fair collection of traits, so interesting stuff. He is also favored by Relore, so maybe he can avoid death? Who knows? Then we have... Oh, that was him. Then we have our mother. We've already really talked about her. She got some new land and a bunch of new traits to go with it. Then we have Quintilian, who is our mother's brother. He now has a weak claim that he can press. He has a wife who is now dead, uh, who he murdered. And he has a couple of our cousins uh, as his children. So chances are something interesting could happen there with uh, them trying to take back Driftmark. Then we have Godric Greyjoy, who has apparently gone and become a black brother, um, which is interesting. I don't think he was a black brother last time. He has a son uh, to Mera Marbrand, who is remarried to a Frey. And uh, yeah, so interesting stuff happening up there. Does he have a title? Oh, he's Ranger of the Shadow Tower. Okay. Then we have Thor Goldmere, who is currently in Sir Tywell's court, so his brother's court. And he is on his second wife. So he married Anne Arryn and then Rosalind Volmark, and they have one child, Meline, who might actually grow old enough to marry, and she's betrothed already to a Karen. Okay. Next up, we have Tywin Rain, who is in our court. He's married to Imara, who is his second wife, uh, and is spymaster of King's Landing. Interesting. So she, she's not in our court. Huh. Very interesting uh, setup there. Uh, did we... Uh, we must have exiled her at some point or something. Anyway. Davin Braxton is incapable right now, so not long left on his life. He's married to Olena. And they have two children, one of which is Commander of Old Town. Um, twice, apparently. And the other one is Lyra Braxton, who is married to Willis Tyrell, previously married to Sir Burton Craighall, and they could still have children. Next up, we have Randall Spicer, who is married to Victoria, and they have one child, Lady Alice of Crackhall, who is married to a Crackhall, to a Sumner. Okay. And they have one child as well, Victoria. Then we have Ivan Lannister, who is now in Tumble, in Turnbridge, so not in Lannister land. He's married to Clara Chambers. Ah. It'll probably be, her, like, her land. And they have, well, he has many children. Not all of them hers, but, you know, many children. Most of them Lydons, by the looks of it. Right, next up we have Dagon Umber, who still controls Seal Shore. He, I think he has one more child since last time, and maybe a new wife. Next up we have Anzom Stark, who is in Bravos. He is the General of Bravos. I think we may, he may have been General last time, so he's been General for a while. It's not been that many years since the last time we did an update, so maybe that's it. And he has a son called Rickard, who I think is new. Uh, oh wait, is he not a follower? Yes, he's also a follower of Moonsingers, which is just awful. Um, then we have Gwynemir Ryder, who is married to Mara, and they have one child, Lady Liana of uh, Pineswood, who is actually already married to Lord Morgan Middle Little. Right. Then we have... Valentine Stark, who is married to Donella, and they have not had any children yet, but there is still a chance he's also favoured by Relore, so a chance he avoids death for some time. Then we have Adam Mormont, who is uh, on his second wife. Yes, married to Daisy Mormont, presumably his cousin. Uh, Daisy would be his... Yeah, his cousin, aunt, something like that. And they have a lot of children, including the current Lord of Bear Island, Jorah, who is married to Pera, Ironsmith. Uh, and he is still a follower of Relore. We then have John Forrester, who is on his second wife, uh, Risewell. His first wife was just a commoner. And they have two children, Wayne 
Uh, I see it's the commoner was one of them. Uh, commoner for both of them. And one of them is married to a car Stark. Then we have Johan Forrester, uh, who is married to Ellen and Glenmore. And they have two children, Beth and Thorin. Then we have Jack Baratheon, who is in the Baratheon court still, married to Eleanor. He did have one daughter, Celise, who has died from the flu, but she had a couple of children, some Butterwells. Then we have Oris Barath, who is actually now married to uh, a co. Um, and he has kind of just moved himself in here. He is the Lord Treasurer of Last Lament, Prince of Last Lament, and Commander of Last Lament. And I believe this is his child, like his children, and they are like heirs to Last Lament. So interesting stuff. Yeah, very interesting stuff happening. And who's that he's mar marrying into? Um, that's some sort of Eastern one. Yeah, uh, some Essos one, I think. Right, then we have Ashadane, who is currently imprisoned by Lord Vorian after an unsuccessful revolt. And he is blinded and widowed and yeah, things things aren't looking good. He was mauled by a bear, so it, all, in, all told his life could be going better. But for Vorian, life is great. He just saw for revolt. He got to kill people with a bear. He's having a lot of fun. And uh, he's currently married to Lady Elise, but he doesn't have any children as an heir. His heir is currently Lord Edric, who is a follower of Valor, but he did blind him. So... Then we have Samuel Bloodcat, who is married to Fryn the Unfaithful. Um, and they had one child, a Shower Blood uh, Cat, but she died stillborn. Uh, so there's still a chance that he um, has an heir, but he doesn't currently have one. Um, then we have uh, Isos Martel, who apparently went off and became a maester, which, interesting path. He's also got. He's, he's definitely up there for number of traits acquired, because he's got so many traits at this point, um, and he's the maester for uh, Winterfell. Cool. Does that say he's... I thought it said he it was educating someone, but uh, it didn't. Then we have Jack Tully, who's still in charge of the Trident. He's now known as the Cunning. He's married to Lady Paramount Tyrene Sand, and they have many children. Next up is Toby Tully who has apparently been given some land in the Red Fork and uh, has strong claims on some more land as well. He is married to Lady Anora of the Red Fork, um, so a piper. And they have a couple of children who are still alive and one who died after getting poisoned with food poisoning. Then we have Lucas Blackwood, who is married to Cass and has one child, William Blackwood, who has decided to get a very ridiculous looking moustache. Then we have Alex Blackwood, who is my on his second wife. Um, yeah, Hara, then Joyce, and he has one child, Malara. Then we have Anders Miller, who I think was a Blackwood, but um, has had children. Uh, he's married, he was married to Jane Rivers, now married to Hatala Ruttiger, and they've had quite a few children as well. Then we have Robert Brightflame, who is married to Amari and has two children, Randa and Enger. Randa is not yet married. Then we have Andros Tarly, who has become a black brother and favoured by Relore, so interesting stuff. He did have a child, Sir Wallace Tarly, who has actually had more, although he has died, has children of his own. So, passing down uh, the Tarly list. Then we have Hall Florent, who is also picking up a ton of traits, including Adventurer. Um, he's married to Bethany Sloan, and they've had a ton of children. Then we have Keenster, who is married to Elaine. And they only have one child. Well, they have two children, sorry. And they have Arwen, who is not yet married, and Rosalind, who is not yet married. Then we have Rotger, who left the being in charge of the Vale and is now a pirate. Um, he's got an interest in life. He's married to Shiera, and they have four children. All um, Aaron's who are going to inherit some very good claims. Well, some of them are going to but going to inherit one big claim. It looks like the others will not be inherited. Then we have Karma Corbray, who is Matt on his second wife, and he has two children, Marwyn and Elaine, who is married to Yorick Malcolm, and he is married to a commoner. Then we have Rickard Royce, who is on his second wife. 
and he has some traits that may make him die soon, but he does have one child, um, Eldercy, um Royce, who is married to Stannis. Okay. Then we have Josh Strong, who's in our court, married to Melisent, and they don't have any children yet. Then we have a whole bunch of people who aren't custom courtiers. Then we have Ellen Tully, who is married to Gilbert Bywater. And they have a couple of children, one of which is married to an Ashford, and one of which is uh, married to a Brune. Then we have McQuelly Greyjoy, who is still hand of, well, still second in command to the most devout, despite being a follower of Valor, and a commander and a sworn shield. So the devout must have done something to earn his trust, but we don't know what that is. Then we have Corrin Dusk, who has become a black brother. Um, not much has happened. Does he have a title there yet? Nope. Then we have Morgana Lannister, who is on her second husband. That's a new one. Grand Wildhorn, uh, also known as Good Brother, and they have a couple of children together. Uh, then we have Laris Lannister, who's in our court, married to Shira, and has um, one daughter. Then we have Devon Trant, who is married to Xanata Zoe, uh, who is also a custom courtier, so we can do them both at the same time. And they have uh, a couple of children, Gladden who is married to Mara Trant, uh, so ma a cousin marriage, and then we have a sibling who is not yet married. Then we have Israel, Lady Isabella, the strong stag, married to uh, Horace Redwine, and they have two children, Eleanor and Rywell, who is also strong. Then we have Tyrone Lannister, who is now captain of the Second Sons, and married to Lady Amara, so a commoner. So, interesting stuff happening there, that in fact that he's, I think he's been all over the place in terms of mercenary companies, but he's now over there in New Valyria and with the Second Sons. Then, we have Liara, uh, Laria, Laara Reed, something like that, who is married to Wendell Frey. They have no children, which is unusual for a Frey, I would say. Uh, didn't mean for that to rhyme. Uh, then, we have... Arachne Weber, who is married to Lord Roland Wainwood, and they have one child, Ronald Wainwood, who is betrothed to Balara Frey. Then we have um, Serena Martell, who was married to Harmon Uller, and they have one child still alive. Well, she has one child still alive, Florian Swan, um, who is surely a bastard? Or... Oh no, he's not a bastard because his father uh, is a deserter of the Night's Watch. So what happened is uh, he became a member of the Night's Watch, marriage cancelled. We may even have saw this last time, so it might not even have been 12 years uh, since the last one. But um, father uh, got became a member of the Night's Watch, became a wildling, and that's why there's no um, marriage there when he's not a bastard. Okay, makes sense. Then we have... Zoltho uh, Zo, who is married to Lady Osha of Deep Down, and they've had a couple of children, Roos Kroll, um, and uh, Jaka Kroll, and Melina Kroll, who are, are definitely new, because they're zero years old. Then we have one that we've already looked at, then we have Eamon Blackfire, who is still in our court, Unmar well, he's married, but no children. Then we have Branton Risewell, who is married to Jonquil of Low Barrel, and they have a couple of children, Jane Risewell and Berna Risewell. Then we have Isaac Wayne Dane, who is on his second wife, Lady Annis. He has one son still alive, the other one was murdered. And uh, Timon is absolutely fine, nothing wrong with him. Oh, and it is December, so we get Christmas music, which I didn't remember. But that's still, that's fine. Um, then we have Tara Stone, previously married to Sansa Stark, now married to a commoner, and they have two children. Or Taris Paybridge now. Then we have Trider Blackmane, who is not yet married to anyone. However, he was only added in the, wait, was he added in the last lot? Or was he added in the, maybe he was added in the second lot. I don't know. He hasn't married yet, so he needs to do that at some point. Then we have Roland Bolton. Still isn't married yet, but is fire obsessed and favored by Relore, so good stuff happening there. Uh, we should do a marriage episode at the start of next one. Then we have Bentos Frey, who is married to Alicia and has one child, Liza. Then we have Stevan Stormy, who is married on his second wife to Lollis. 
as one child, Conan Stormy, who is mar is marrying matrilineally to Alyssa of Silver Springs. Then we have Yaspicious Estmont, who is married to Belinda Hasty and is now in our court, and we have a favour with him. We have Medea as Stokeworth, who is married to Gawain Hardvale, and they have a couple of children. Uh, or is that Harding of Hardvale? Okay. Um, then we have Zan Damorius, who is still in, was well, moved to New Valeria. He's now a spy master for the Bright Banner, so a mercenary company over there. And did I see he had a son? Yes, he has a new wife. Um, and he has uh, a son and a daughter. Cool. Then we have Vaynar Blackfire, the cause of much distress over here, who is married to Scalera. Then we have. Um, who is next? Then we have Frederick Seltigar, who is married to Titan and has one child, Pate. We have Elaine Malcolm, who is married to Uther Aaron, and they have a couple of different children. Then we have Tristane Martin. Nope, not him. Not her. Then we get into the next batch. We have Rupert Seaworth, who is married to Serena and is uh, has a child, Dante or Donius uh, Seaworth. Then we have Van Connington, who is married to Maris and has one child, John Connington. And we have Edward uh, Snow, who is taking on the name Brindlewood, married to the Dowager Queen Dolessa of the Iron Throne. Um, so who was her parents? Tyrene Sand and Jack the Tunning, uh, the uh, Cunning. Why is she Dowager Queen of the Iron Throne? I mean, she is in the Iron Throne. Oh, because one of her children... Oh. Because her previous husband was King Joffrey. Okay. I un I understand now. Uh, but now he's married to Edward Snow Brindlewood. Um, who I think was also a Baratheon. Uh, was a Baratheon bastard. So, another son of Robert. Um, then we have Lysander Tharis, who has his land. And is married to Lady Quirin of Gilmont. And has one daughter. Then we have Sibeth Baratheon, who is not yet married, uh, but is a Shadowbinder. Interesting stuff could happen. Uh, I don't know what Shadowbinders do, but interesting stuff. Aaron Baelish, who is not yet married. Again, these lot were added in the last uh, lot of people who were added in, so chances are not a lot of them are doing anything yet. We have Mario Quagile, who is married to a Beesbury, and they have a couple of children. Then we have uh, Corrin Santagar, who is married to Lysander. Oh, okay, interesting. Uh, we already looked at her, but without me realizing. Um, then we have Guadalupe Junio, who is married to Celise Sloan, and they have one child, Kasana. Then we have Oth Othoro Nagam, who is married to Atali. Um, and they don't have any children yet, but that could change. We have Lazario Mopatis, who has taken over his father's seat in Pentos, and is married to uh, Alison, and they have two children, Jaqua and Torman, or Torma. Then we have uh, Joy Dustin, who is matrilineally married to Brandon Long, and they have one child, Ethan. Then we have Luthien Redman, who is married to Rowana Umber. We have Roxas Blackrose, who is married to Arasa with one child, Alanis. Then we have Mikhail Tyrell, who is, yes, is a custom one. Just had to double check there. Who is now over there in Astapor, married to Olena. No children just yet. Wonder why he's over in Astapor. Interesting stuff. We have Reynard Bluepill, who is married to Ala Westbrook and have two children. We have... Uh, I've completely lost where I was on the list. Blue pill. Uh, then we have Maraxia Targaryen, who is still uh, our red priest and is still pregnant, uh, which I think might be bugged, but we'll just ignore it. We have Gairon Valerian, who is married to Amaria Free, and has one daughter who's alive and one son who is not, because he died a sickly infant. Then we have Bibbit Ripwin, who is married to Sir Jamie Hersey, and they have one child, Osric. Then we have Athelos Went, who is married to Elia, and they have one child, Thomas, who, well, one who's still alive. Then we have Ral uh, Rathalzar uh, Lofton, who, is who we gave uh, Rathrock to, 
and he is married to Lady Leona. Then we have Commander Matthias Morag, who is commander of the Gates of the Moon, underneath uh, the Tully rule, and he is married to Lady Meriel. Uh, what's interesting is I believe his land is under threat, because I think the Veil might be able to take it, or... No, it's the Trident declaring for more land in the Veil, so... I don't know, maybe he'll get more land soon. Then we have Justin Lionsbane, who has managed to get himself kicked out of... Um, out of Castly Rock, I think, was where he was. I'm not 100% sure where I started him off. He's married to Elise, and he has one child, Cedric. He's in Pentos now, so maybe he went and joined uh, Mr. Mopatis over there. Then we have Banneth Serret, who is commander of Lannisport, and has actually converted to Faith the Seven very quickly. And then I think we're done. Yeah, we're done on custom courtiers. So, thank you for watching. I'm going to very quickly wrap up this episode, but if you have any comments about the slightly different style, please tell me, and I'll see what I can do about making it better. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Goodbye.